Hello, and Christ is in our midst. Today I'd like to talk with you about St. Nicholas. Now, he doesn't look at all like Santa Claus that we have at Christmas time, uh, but Santa Claus is actually based on a real live uh, saint from the early church, a, a saintly bishop named St. Nicholas. Uh, St. Nicholas was a, a boy in what we now call the country of Turkey, in southern Turkey, in the area of Mira, uh, in the region that was called Lycia. And uh, he was born around the year 280. Uh, and his uncle was the, the bishop of that area. And his uncle noticed that even as a very young boy, Nicholas loved being in church. He loved the prayers of the church. Uh, he loved reading the scriptures and hearing the scriptures being read. And his uncle helped to prepare him for a life serving in the church, serving as a follower of Jesus in the church, uh, teaching him how to be a reader in the church. Eventually, Nicholas was ordained a priest, and uh, later, after his uncle died, uh, Nicholas himself became the bishop uh, of that area. We call him St. Nicholas of Mira in Lycia. That was his diocese as a, a bishop. Uh, and here in the icon, you see him depicted as, as a bishop. Now, there are two things that I'd like to just share with you about St. Nicholas. There are a lot of legends about St. Nicholas, but uh, there are two very important things that uh, I'd like you to, to remember about him. The first is that as a very young child, uh, he loved the life of the church. He loved studying the Holy Scriptures. And one of the remarkable things is that the, the very same scriptures that Nicholas listened to and read as a boy are the, the same scriptures that we read in the church now, so many, many hundreds of years later. And so, for example, the gospel reading that we have on the Feast of St. Nicholas on December 6th comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. And it talks about the sermon that Jesus gave on a level place, on a plain, uh, out, outdoors. And here's, here's part of that. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you, when, blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Well. Jesus' disciples heard those, those words and followed Jesus uh, to do what they could to, to help people who were hungry, who were poor, who were sad and, and weeping. And Nicholas, hundreds of years later, did exactly the same thing. He was touched by those words and wanted to help people uh, as, a, as a follower of, of Christ. And here we are in the 21st century listening to those very same words and trying to do the same, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So that's the first thing to remember, that even as a young boy, long before he had any kind of official position uh, in the church, uh, Nicholas loved the scriptures, loved reading the scriptures, studying them, um, and, and that's something that, that we all can do, that you can do. The second thing to remember is that Nicholas, as a, a priest and bishop, uh, really cared for people. Uh, he loved people. And that's what's, re that's what's remained in the, uh, the memory of, of people year after year, century after century, after uh, Nicholas had, had died uh, in the fourth century. Uh, it's remarkable that someone who died so long ago is still remembered with such affection and warmth. And that's because he himself cared for people. We may not know all the details about his life, all the stories. There may be some legendary stories that have built up around his life. But the important thing to remember is that people remember the goodness of Nicholas. And why was he good? Uh, because he wanted to be a follower of Jesus Christ, just as we have uh, in the Gospels. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Uh, that's what the Gospel says, and that's what certainly Nicholas would have experienced too. Uh, despite whatever difficulties and trials he might have experienced, uh, he experienced also a life of joy in following uh, Jesus Christ. So those two things are 
uh, important to remember that he was able, right from a young child, to study the scriptures, to learn more and more about the teachings of Jesus and to put them into practice in his own life. And in doing that, to care for people as best as he could, to serve them. Uh, those are the things that we remember, especially about uh, Nicholas, St. Nicholas. Now, we have, I'll finish by just showing one more icon that we have in our church of St. Nicholas, and it's quite a special icon. It's an icon on the iconostasis. Here is the icon. It's actually an icon of two saints. On the left there is Saint Nicholas, and on the right is Saint Alexandra. And this icon was donated by the last Tsar of Russia sometime around 1898, when Holy Ghost Church was almost brand new. Uh, Tsar Nicholas II and his wife Alexandra uh, donated uh, not just this icon, but a number, all the icons on this icon screen. And they also donated the bells that we ring at every church service. Well, Nicholas and Alexander themselves went on to become uh, saints because they were killed for their faith in Jesus Christ uh, in uh, the early part of the 20th century. After, during the Russian uh, Revolution. So this is a special icon, and of course the, this was donated because those are the patron saints of Tsar Nicholas and his wife Alexandra. So God bless all of you, and through the prayers of Saint Nicholas, may we all learn just a little bit more about how to love the scriptures and how to put into practice the love of the poor, the sick, the hungry, and those who are weeping and in any kind of distress. God bless you all. Christ is in our midst.